And our New Testament reading for tonight is still in the book of James. Um, we're looking now at the third chapter, and we're looking at verses 1 to 12. Taming the tongue. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. A great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It strains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine, figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. And I'll point out the um, interesting thing here is that we are we are in the Advent season. We're this holiday season. We're kind of in between holidays, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, that time when family gets together and we and we mingle. And when we we are straight between uh, as far as Advent candles, we we lit the Hope candle this last weekend and next this coming weekend, coming Sunday, we light candle of peace. Now. Uh, the thing about the tongue is we can we can hope for for peace, but with with our with the tongue and when we're getting together as families, we know that inevitably something's going to be said. There's going to be some disruption at some point in the gathering. That's an unfortunate part of our humanness and an unfortunate part of of gathering as families. But we could perhaps hope and pray for that. Um, the irony is that we probably should have preached this sermon right before Thanksgiving, so that we could all been ready to. To be, to be at our very best with our tongues and, and with our behavior. Um, so with that, let's look at what James is telling us here. Now the first thing is I will caution you, we read into that, not many of you should become teachers, and pastors always comment and should always consider that that's pointed directly at, at the person that is leading the meetings or the gatherings. Um, but what that really doesn't, what that really means is we shouldn't become rabbis, teachers. Um, we should be careful that we choose to do that. Not that you shouldn't, as an individual, be teaching the children or teaching someone else. That does not absolve you of any responsibility to share the faith. So don't think that. What it is getting at is that not everyone should be should should feel that they are ready or qualified to, to be a rabbi. And if you are, you should do it with a great humility and with great great uh, consideration about your shortcomings because as he goes on we all fall short and no one is perfect in their words nor their actions and so James is cautioning us a little bit there is what's going on there but do not read into that and you, you are being removed from your responsibility to to evangelize and to witness that's not the point um, the point is that we are with our words we can cause so much damage, we can cause so much good. And someone that's in the, in the pulpit, we, we promote this thing that we call Christianity by words, whether they're spoken or written, right? That's a great deal of how we are the people of the book. We are the written word, as well as the spoken word. Uh, but early on, much of, the, much of the teaching was by speaking because so many of the people were illiterate. They couldn't read. And so they had to have the they had to have the message given to them verbally and spoken to them. Um, we need to look at this and be cautious that when we read into it, we don't read into it that it's only about the spoken word, though. It's also about the written word. It's also about body language. It's about communication. 
It's not simply about the tongue and what you say verbally. Uh, today's world, a great deal of the issues and the flames that start burning, he talks about how great a forest is ablaze, set ablaze by a small fire. A lot of those fires are burning on the internet and Facebook and what have you, various different social media or even just emails or wherever. You can, because you have the, the, the lack of any kind of body um, language, any kind of intonation in your voice, it's impossible many times to really adequately or correctly convey what you're meaning and so easy to misread it. It's easy enough to misread it when you're right face to face with the person. If you don't understand how their body language, how their intonation works, you can really easily think someone's being snarky when they don't think they are. But in email or on Facebook, it's extraordinarily easy. So we have to be careful. It's not only what we speak, it's about what we do and what we type. So don't think that this absolves you. You can type any, I, as long as I don't say it, I'm okay. I can slam everybody and I can set the world on fire. And sometimes we say this, uh, you know, some people just like to watch the world burn. Have you ever heard that saying? Some people do, they are instigators. We do not want to be an instigator. Our goal is to be peacemakers, to be like, we've, we've, we've spent quite a bit of time this year with Luke, and one of the things I love about Luke is he's a peacemaker. He's trying to bring factions together. Goes on and talks about, the tongue is placed among our members of the world of inequity. It strains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it is itself set on fire by hell. That sounds so harsh, translated like that. The word is actually Gehenna, not hell in in Greek, it's Gehenna. What it means, Gehenna is in the valley of Hanan, in the Hanan Valley. It's the garbage dump. And it itself is set on fire by garbage. It is garbage in, garbage out. Remember that old computer saying? The tongue is filth. It's, it's trying to cause trouble. It's not, it's not quite as harsh, perhaps, as when we read it like as we're reading it as translated here in the NRSV, it's a place of garbage. The tongue is a place of garbage. It's just this open pit that's smoldering and ruin and death and destruction. Not a very pretty picture, is it? Um, and he goes on to talk about how we do this terrible thing. We come to church, and most, many times this is brought up about this scripture, many, many times in, in commentaries and sermons, but it's very appropriate. We come to church and we make, say, niceties, and we get in the car and we leave and we get out on the highway and somebody cuts us off and we, whatever we do, <laughs> that isn't such a nicety and isn't such a blessing. So with the same tongue that we've just blessed our brother and sister in the inside the sanctuary, we've gone outside into the real world where we're supposed to witness and, and, and present ourselves as being Christians. We've just presented ourselves as being worldly. We've just presented ourselves as being garbage, Gehenna. That's not what we're supposed to do. The same spring that yields fresh water should not be spouting forth salt water which is what the brackish means. But the, the, so it's, the, it's that idea of being unclean. So let's remember that as we go about this week, as we go about this upcoming holiday, it was Christmas time, the most gracious, most beautiful holiday of all, but yet when families gather, all too often it becomes instead of a holiday of joy or even like Thanksgiving, a holiday of Thanksgiving, it becomes this event that causes disruption and discord and can even cause permanent fracture and division among families, sad to say. Let's pray that doesn't happen, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for the writings of Paul, or James, rather. We, we thank you so much for the words about of caution about uh, how we talk to each other, how we deal with each other, and how we respond to each other. Let us please remember that it's not just about the spoken word, Lord, but that's so many more things. Uh, especially in this day of, of modern times with the computers and the internet. And, and we understand that all of those things bring us even more responsibility to be careful of what we say and what we do and how we behave. We pray this to you in your glory. Amen. Um.